Okay, let's look at USGS multipoint corrections. Say I've had my sensor uh, in the water for for uh, for a while, and I've collected this this much data. And near the end of that period, you see I've got my uh, reading here, where I I clean the sensor and and uh, saw what it was reading and, and discovered that it was reading uh, a little that this this data was collected and it was reading a little bit too low. So we're going to have to correct for that. Select that section of data. Choose the USGS multipoint correction. And since I'm going to be, I'm doing a fouling correction here, um, I'm just going to set the correction type to, to set one here. It doesn't actually change anything, that's just the convention. People do their fouling corrections on set one, their calibration corrections on set two, and other corrections on set three. It just happens to be the way the USGS does it. Okay, so set one, and I saw that my uh, difference here is 0.04, so let's put in a correction factor of 0.04, and you can see for the whole period that just uh, that's going to adjust the data up by that much. It's basically the same thing as doing an offset correction. Now, if I assume that at the start of my period that my uh, sensor was clean and reading, reading accurately, that um, there shouldn't be any correction factor at the beginning here. So what I'll, I'll do is something like this. So that's to say, at the uh, start of the period, start point, don't apply any correction, but at the end of the period, apply that much correction, end point. This is basically the same thing as doing a drift correction, but you know you can use the USGS multipoint to, to do those. I'll put that in. Okay. Now that I've put in my fouling correction, let's uh, assume that I, I, let's pretend that I took my, my sensor back to the lab at the end of this uh, period and I uh, tested it against my standard pH solution to, and now I have a, a calibration corrections that I want to apply for this, this section of data. Let's put that in. So we'll start another USGS multipoint correction. And this time will be set to because we're going to do a, a calibration correction. And I tested my sensor in the lab against uh, pH 4 solution and 7 and pH 10 solution. And I found that at pH 4 it was reading just about bang on. At pH 7, it was reading a little bit too high, so we're going to have to correct that down by 1%. And at pH 10, it was reading 2% too high, so we're going to uh, correct it down that much. Now, what this is, what I've, uh, what I've put in here, and the effect of this correction is to say that, you know, for a value, if a value was at exactly uh, 7 pH, we're going to apply that this much correction. If a value were exactly at 10 pH, we're going to be applying a lot more correction. And for any value in between those, um, between 7 and 10, we'll, we'll apply a corrective factor somewhere between these two values. So in effect, the amount of correction that the uh, software is going to be applying to each of the, your points is going to depend on the value of the point itself. And you can sort of see that in the chart here. These values that are a little bit uh, higher and closer to 10 um, they're getting corrected a little more, and maybe these ones over here that are a little lower, um, they're getting corrected a little less because they're closer to 7 with a smaller corrective factor. Now, in practice, um, if, I'm, if I uh, assume that I had my device perfectly calibrated at the start of this period and, and it was you know, out of calibration by the end of the period, I'll probably do something like this. I'll have zero correction at the start point, and by the end point, oops. I'll 
I'll put in my corrective factors there. Oops. Okay. And as you can see by the suggested correction that it's going to put in, um, at the start of the period, where it, the device is, we're assuming it's perfectly calibrated, so no corrective action is, is needed. But at, by the end of the period, um, it's the, the device, well, this is what the results of our calibration test showed. It needed that much correction at these different levels. And we're assuming that it fell out of calibration gradually through that period. And so the, the size of the correction gets larger and larger through that period. So it's a, it's a, so, you know, for any point on a given day, the amount of the correction depends on, you know, the value of the point and how it, f how it falls between these corrective factors for these different values and also uh, where, what, how far along in the corrective, in the, in the period it was. So let's, uh, we'll just save that correction. For more information on, on the USGS multipoint correction, make sure that you uh, search for USGS multipoint in the uh, user guide, and you can read more about it here. And remember that this type of correction, both you know, filing corrections and, and, and calibration corrections of this, of this matter, you can have um, time series automate this for you and figure out exactly what all these corrective factors should be depending on the readings and calibration uh, 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 readings that you put into the field data editor. So uh, be on the lookout for other material on the 360 portal and in the user guide about the auto-suggested correction feature. You can search for that too.